It's the dictionary. 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 Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. I have a big old knot in my shoulder and I don't like it. It makes me very sad. Oh boy, I don't know what happened. But not enough about me. How about you? Would you like to hear some words today? Okay, let's do that. The first word is the word faithless. And uh, there's just a little bit of definitions, but a whole lot of synonym information. So, faithless, no faith, adjective from the 14th century, number one, not true to allegiance or duty. Not true to allegiance or duty. That's worded kind of silly. The synonyms are treacherous and disloyal. The opposite of the words that we were talking about in the previous episode. Faith, faithful, loyal. Um, And the example is a faithless servant. That is not a servant that you would like to have in your place. I don't think people should have servants in the first place, probably. Servant, there's a lot of connotations to that word. Uh, They are not loyal. They are treacherous. Oh, I have a treacherous servant at my house. That's, you don't want that. Not, they're not allegiance. They don't have allegiance to you. Okay. Uh, Number two, not to be relied on. And the synonym is untrustworthy. Yeah, same idea. As in a faithless tool. You can't have faith in this tool, in this servant, whatever, because they're, you can't trust them. They're not loyal. They might break a faithless tool. A hammer, unless it's old and loose on the top, a hammer is probably a faithful tool, not a faithless tool. But uh, yeah, if your tools are getting old, you might want to replace them because they're becoming faithless. And I have never heard this used word, this word used in these ways. Faithlessly is an adverb, and faiths, faithlessness, faithlessness, uh, that is a noun. Um, so, synonym stuff. Here we go. Uh, faithless, false, disloyal, traitorous, treacherous, and perfidious. Perfidious. Those all mean untrue to what should command one's fidelity or allegiance. Faithless applies to any failure to keep a promise or pledge or any breach of allegiance or loyalty, as in faithless allies. Those don't seem like allies, do they? Failure to keep a promise. Yeah, they're not. How, how can they even be allies if they're faithless allies? False stresses the fact of failing to be true in any manner ranging from fickleness to cold treachery, as in the example betrayed by false friends. Are you a false friend? Are you going to be treacherous against me? Are you, how much, are you, are you very fickle? Uh, disloyal implies a lack of complete faithfulness to a friend cause, leader, or country, as in disloyal to their country. Just, that's a very, very simple example. Traitorous. Traitorous implies either actual treason or a serious betrayal of trust, as in traitorous acts punishable by death. Ooh, those are, that's very, very bad If you are a traitor to your country, disloyal to your country, they might put you to death, depending on the country. Uh, Treacherous. Treacherous implies readiness to betray trust or confidence, as in a treacherous advisor. Again, similar to the allies. I don't think I want an advisor who is described as treacherous. You found out later that they were a treacherous advisor. Um, Implies readiness to... I am ready to betray my trust, to betray your trust or your confidence, because I am your humble, treacherous advisor. 
Um, so I think, yes, the last one, perfidious. P-E-R-F-I-D-I-O-U-S. Perfidious adds to faithless the implication of an incapacity for fidelity or reliability, as in a perfidious double-crosser. Uh, a double-crosser implication of an incapacity for fidelity or reliability. So yes, they. I think, I think um, perfidious is maybe assumed when you're talking about a double-crosser, because it seems like it's sort of like that's the whole definition of a double-crosser, is that they are perfidious. They have the implication of an incapacity for fidelity or reliability. You can't rely on them. You can't rely on the double-crosser because they're double-crossing everybody. Everybody's getting crossed doubly. Um, okay, that's that's enough for faithless. Uh, I am your... I am not your faithless podcast host. I am very faithful and loyal. Um, the sound effect today... Ooh, is it gonna be... I, I think I'm just going to go... Mm. The next word is... F is this a line? Fater. Yes, I think it is fater. There's a number of words in this episode that I'm not familiar with. Uh, so this is spelled F-A-I-T-O-U-R. It is pronounced, it looks like fater. Noun from the 14th century. It's archaic guess that's not a huge surprise. Uh, the synonyms are cheat and imposter. Oh, we definitely have a, a, a theme. I can see a theme in a lot of this episode. A cheat, imposter, a fater. And where does this word come from? Uh, it is from Anglo-French, fêteur, which is spelled the same way. It means maker or swindler. That seems like a bit of a stretch between the two of those. Uh, from Latin factor, which means doer, and there's more of the word factor, and we know that that comes from the Latin facere, which means to make or to do. So it's just somebody who's doing something, but in a maybe a faithless way, a fater. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Next is fajita. Oh, yes, fajita. Uh, you can... The, First syllable can be fa or fa. Fajita. Fajita. It is spelled F A J I T A. Uh, this is a noun from 1971. Hmm. I guess um, it seems more recent than I would think, but you know, there's a lot of dishes that I think were very Americanized, made in America, and so yeah, they're they're fairly new. Um, can't wait to find out, like, when was quesadilla invented? Burrito, taco, all those. Let's find out. We'll find out later. So, fajita is a marinated strip, usually of beef or chicken, grilled or broiled, and served usually with a flour tortilla and various savory fillings. And this is usually used in plural, fajitas. So... I don't think I realized that it that the actual strip of meat is the fajita, because what does the etymology say? It's American Spanish, uh, diminutive of the Spanish word faja, F-A-J-A, -A, which means sash or belt. Huh. So it's like, because it's a strip of beef or chicken, it's skinny, you could, if it's long enough, you could wear it as a belt or a sash, you can be Miss America wearing the sash of beef. Here she comes. No, be Miss Miss Beef. There's probably a Miss Beef somewhere. Uh, a more etymology. This is from the Catal a uh, uh, Catalian. No, Ca Catalonian. Catalonian. Uh, Fixa. Although I don't. They might say Faixa. I'm not sure how that's pronounced. It's a, with an X. Um, from the Latin fascia, which means band, which I think is related to the fascia in your in your muscles, your in your body. I guess it's in bands. Um, and then there's more of the word fascia. Yeah, F A S C I A. So, uh, oh, there was a lot of stuff in there. So it's just this like skinny, skinny band, skinny str strip, sash, belt. They cut the meat into those, and that those are the fajitas. 
and then you eat the fajitas when you mix them with your veggies and your sauces and you put them in a tortilla and it is so tasty and sizzly. You got to watch out for that pan. That pan is hot. Mmm, when I eat the fajitas, it makes me say, mmm. Next is the first form of the word fake, F-A-K-E, transitive verb from the 15th century, and it means to coil in fakes. And I don't know what the noun fake is, so we got to keep on learning. Come on, everybody. Let's go learn. So we got to move on to Yum. The second form of fake is a noun from 1627, and this is one loop of a coil as of a ship's rope or a fire hose coiled free for running. So when you, when you are coiling a rope on a boat or a fire hose or maybe other things, you're coil, coiling it probably on the floor or maybe on a hook and it must be coiled in the right way and so because when you take the hose if you're taking the fire hose and you got to go run with it to the fire you you don't want to get hung up and so you want it's free for you can run free for running i gotta go run with this hose this rope and if it's not coiled properly it will probably yank you back so that is a fake but it doesn't say why it's called a fake and the transitive verb will go back a word the transitive version of this is to coil in fake so the action of making these fakes is faking but again i don't know why it's called fake sailors know this one fire people know this one and I don't know who else knows this one. But this, I never heard of this. This is so interesting. Do they, they must still call them fakes. There's a lot of fakes in that fire hose. Yeah, the, the, the guy who, who coiled it, he was, he was real good at faking. He faked everybody out. Yum. The third form of fake is an adjective from 1775. And the synonyms are counterfeit and sham. Yep. That's what it is. We know all about this one. Fake things, counterfeit fakes. Um, any other fakes, they're just, they're false. They're false. But what's interesting is that the etymology says origin unknown. I feel like we should know where this word came from. Mmm. The fourth form of fake is a noun from 1827. Um, so we have one definition and then just some subs for that one. Main definition is one that is not what it purports to be. One that is not what it purports to be. I am not a fake. If I were a fake, I would be saying that I know everything and I am smart and I have all of the answers. But we know that that is not true. And so I'm very honest about my 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 ignorance my stupidity my lack of knowledge whatever i'm trying to learn but there are definitely some people out there who are like oh yeah i you know i i know all i know french i know how to juggle i know all those things you're just uh, you're just a fake so what are the sub definitions a a worthless imitation passed off as genuine like a dollar bill or typically it would probably be a 20 or a hundred dollar bill it's not genuine i don't think i've ever had i don't i don't believe i've ever had i always get worried if i have like a 50 or a 100 even a 20 and i go to pay for it they take the marker on the thing to see if it's counterfeit and i'm like man i really hope i don't have a counterfeit bill i've never made any counterfeit bills i got this from the atm or the bank or something and uh, it's their fault if they gave me the wrong type of bill. One of them fake bills. B. The synonyms are imposter and charlatan. We have seen now, f I guess, five words that all basically mean the same thing. Imposter, charlatan, counterfeit, sham, and fake. Those are all very, very similar. C. A simulated movement in a sports contest as a pretended kick, pass, or jump, 
or a quick movement in one direction before going in another. Uh, and it is designed to deceive an opponent. So, uh, of course, you know, I think of like a basketball or American football or soccer, regular football too. Um, they're going to come up to their oppo opponent and then they're going to fake them out. They're going to be like, oh, wait, am I going to go left? Am I going to go right? Which way am I going to go? You don't know. I don't know. We're going back and forth. I'm dribbling the ball with my hands or with my feet. Blue, 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 blue. Where are we going to go? Whew! And then they got faked out. They don't usually last that long, though. Uh, so that was a long definition for C. And now we got D, a device or apparatus used by a magician to achieve the illusion of magic in a trick. The illusion of magic. As far as we know, there is no real magic, so it's all just an illusion. Um, it, so the device, the apparatus, is the fake. Maybe that box where they cut the person in half, that would be the fake. The fake box. A synonym for all of them is imposture. Like, Posture, have good posture, but it's imposture, so I don't know that word. Um, anything else for that one? I don't think so. The etymology is still origin unknown. Same, it's the same word. Ooh. The fifth form of fake is a verb from 1851, starting with transitive. Number one, to alter, manipulate, or treat so as to give a spuriously genuine appearance to. The synonym is doctor. Like, I'm just going to doctor this up to make it look one way, but it's really not genuine. Alter, alter it, manipulate it, treat it in some way. Uh, the example is faked the lab results. How are you faking the lab results? Are you putting something in? The, the, the chemicals, the liquids, whatever it is that the lab is going to test, maybe you're swapping things out, That would all of that would be doctoring, would be faking the lab results. Number two, synonyms are counterfeit, simulate, and concoct. As in, faked a heart attack. Oh, oh, I'm, I'm feeling, oh, oh, my arm, my chest. Oh, I got you. I was just faking a heart attack. I, I know. I was so convincing. Counterfeit, simulate, concoct. I'm simulating a heart attack. Number three. To deceive in a sports contest by means of a fake. And who might you be deceiving? That could be an opponent. And of course, we talked about that in the previous one with the action of the faking. So this is so, uh, this is the the verb the verb faking uh you you fake them with a fake that's there you there we go number four synonyms are improvise and ad lib uh okay uh as in the example this is a quote whistle a few bars and i'll fake the rest that is a quote from robert sylvester well, once you whistle a few bars, I will get the idea of the tune, and then I will just improvise and ad-lib the rest. We'll make it up as we go. I, I faked that whole song. I like to fake songs. Um, not so good with the words, as you can tell, but uh, like when I'm at home whatever, doing the dishes, uh, something. I, I either in my head or out loud, I will, you know, either scat or whistle or hum uh, a song. And I don't know. I don't think they're too bad. I think they're all right. But nobody ever gets to listen to them, just me. Here we go with intransitive. Number one, to engage in faking something. To engage in faking something. How is this being used? The synonym is pretend. Oh, pretend is so fun. We love to pretend. Let's fake. Let's let's fake house. Uh, this is sometimes used with the word it, as in, if you don't have the answers, fake it. Pretend that you have the answers. What what context is that good in? I feel like sometimes maybe you should just be like, 
I don't know the answer to that. By the way, I think I forgot to say this is episode F15. F15, that's where we're at. So fake the answers. Pretend just engage in faking something. I'm going to engage by making up something. Hmm. And that's intransitive? I don't know. Number two, to give a fake to an opponent. <laughs> okay. How, how, how is that transitive and intransitive? Something seems funny there. I'm going to give a fake to you, so I'm going to fake you, but I'm also doing the transitive action of faking you with a fake. I don't know. Faker is a noun. Fakery is also a noun. Um, okay, we gotta now move on to a related word. Ooh, mm, mm. Fake out. Two words. Transitive verb from 1949. And this is to deliberately mislead. The synonyms are fool and trick. Ha ha, I fooled you, I tricked you, I faked you out. You, you, you must feel so silly now. Uh, they Might Be Giants have a song, a not very well-known song, I think. Is it called Fake Out? There's a, there basically, there's a lot of words, a lot of words and terms and phrases that have the word fake in the song. Fake Out. Fake In. Counterfeit. Maybe it's called Counterfeit Fake. There's a lot of, a lot of fakey, fakey words in that song. I'll put a link in the show notes. Okay, we're done with all the fakey fakes. So now we gotta move on to... Mm. This, so this word has a different pronunciation for number one and number two, so I'm going to spell it to you first. F-A-K-I-R. It is a noun from 1609. Number one, the pronunciations are fakir or fak... Okay, so the first three versions are you're emphasizing the second syllable. Fakir, fakir... Fakir, f, fa, fa, or you can say, is that a long, I think it's fake, I think it's faker. I think faker is the fourth pronunciation. That seems like the more American way to say it, so I don't approve of that one. Fakir, that seems most appropriate. So, 1A is a Muslim mendicant, and the synonym is dervish. Now, I have heard of these words, dervish and mendicant. In fact, the Ds, we had the Ds a couple of letters ago, and I can't specifically remember what it is, uh, but it is somebody who is Muslim, and they are a mendicant and a dervish, and they are also called a fakir. 1B is an itinerant Hindu ascetic or wonder worker. Wonder worker has a hyphen, so that's like a specific term for something, and I've never heard of that before, and I find this so interesting and fascinating. Um, but then we get to number two. The pronunciation there is definitely faker, and the synonym, we have a couple of them, imposter, or especially the synonym swindler. So is this just a different spelling of faker, F-A-K-E-R, opposed to F-A-K-I-R? Or are we supposed to learn from this that the Muslim mendicant or the itinerant Hindu ascetic or wonder worker are swindlers, are imposters? I don't want to say things that I don't know because that very well probably is not true. But they're in the same section here, so, you know, I don't know. I think that I should probably put maybe some links in the show notes for Fakir, the Muslim mendicant, the dervish, the itinerant Hindu ascetic, or wonder worker. I'm cu curious what a wonder worker is. Um, and it's like, well, okay, so are they related at all to imposter or swindler? I'm going to guess no, but I'm curious. Why are they... Why do we have this other spelling for imposter and swindler when when it, it's just faker with an E? I don't know anything. Um, so the etymology says this is an Arabic word. Uh, I assume it's pronounced fakir or something close to that. It's spelled with a Q instead of a K. And it literally means poor man. 
poor man, fighter of the rich man. Um, so somebody who is poor, I guess. They are a fakir. Moving on to yummy. Uh, this word is, is it fala? It is fala. Two words. First word, F-A. Second word, L-A. Fala, la, 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 la. This is a noun from 1597, and it is a 16th and 17th century part song. Part song has a hyphen, so I don't really know what that is. A part song? Is it just part of a song? 16th and 17th century part song. Okay, the etymology says that this is fala, which is meaningless symbol syllables, meaningless syllables often occurring in its refrain. So I think this is where we literally got fa la 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 from. There's this song. Is the song called fa la or does it have a different name? But in the song, I guess, they just put in the words fa la at some point. And they are in the refrain and they don't mean anything. It doesn't say what language this is from. Uh, and <laughs> but now they have become an entry in the dictionary. It, they don't even it doesn't what I just it seems mm, it's so weird. Fala. Okay. Yummy. I am so yummy in my tummy when I eat falafel. F-A-L-A-F-E-L -A -A -E or F-E-L-A-F-E-L. -E -E I did not know that you could spell it like that, although I've probably seen it. Falafel. Um, let's see. I guess the plural is the same word, just with no S. This is a noun from 1949. 1949? It is something great. That's what it is. It is a spicy mixture. I would not call it spicy. I don't know if I've ever had spice. Maybe I've had specifically spicy falafel, but a regular falafel, I would not call spicy. A spicy mixture of ground vegetables, as chickpeas or fava beans, formed into balls or patties, and then fried. Oh, yeah. Uh, this is from the Arabic word falafel. Uh, they, maybe they pronounce it a little bit differently. I don't know, but I say falafel, and you say falafel. And these are so good. And uh, I think they're pretty healthy. You know, they're just they're just uh, chickpeas uh, squished together into a ball with the seasonings and maybe something to keep them all together. And then you fry them up. Um, and I actually made some falafel. I would not have done this on my own. But when we got together with the family for Christmas last year, 2023, um, I have some cousins who are half Lebanese, and of course, with all of the craziness going on in that part of the world, um, my cousin was like, I want to do a Middle Eastern dinner and celebrate the heritage of all, all, all our, my people, basically. And, and so we, we did a whole bunch of stuff, but one of the things that we did was we made falafel, and I helped to cook it, and he knew how to make them, and so we had a pot of oil, and we were putting them in there and frying them up, and Oh man, so good. You get oh, nothing, there's nothing like falafel. Somebody, I believe I saw years ago made falafel the the they they didn't make the balls, they just made the stuff and then they put it into a waffle maker and now that is known as a fa waffle. And I would love to have a fa waffle. It's just a good word. Okay, next word. Ooh. The next word is phalangist or phalangist? I prefer phalangist. Capital F-A-L-A-N-G-I-S-T. I think it's saying that phalangist is fine too, but I don't like saying that. It just seems wrong. Noun from 1936. This is a member of the fascist political party governing Spain after the Civil War of 1936 to 1939. Okay, well, let's find out where this came from. It is uh, from the Spanish word phalangista. I think that would that's how you pronounce that. From 
Falangi Española, and I think I probably said that bad. Uh, that F A L A N G E has a capital F. How do you say that in Spanish? Falang, Falangi, Falang, I don't know. But the second word is Española because this means Spanish phalanx with a PH, and that is the fascist organization. So somebody who was part of that group is a uh, phalangist. And um, I don't know if they're around anymore because they were, I guess, active in the, the Civil War, 1936 to 1939. I don't know anything about my Spanish history. Mm, I can't help you. I would be a faker if I said I knew. Yum. The last word is falasha. I think that's what it is, falasha. Capital F-A-L-A-S-H-A. Noun from 1710, and this is a member of a people of Highland Ethiopia who practice a variety of Judaism. Oh, well, that is fascinating. Um, I guess they're not terribly far from what people call the Holy Land, right? Ethiop Where is Ethiopia? I'm trying to, trying to remember my junior high geography. I feel like it's more in the north of Africa, but I don't know. It must be. Um, and uh, yeah, somehow Judaism got to them, and they practice a form of it, and uh, they call themselves Falasha. Don't know where the name came from. Uh, oh, well, I mean, technically it says it's Amharic. Is that Amharic? I don't know what that word is. Um, it's spelled Amharic. And it is the word Falasha, but... It's just their word. So I don't know. Does that word mean Jewish? Does it mean? I don't know what it means because it doesn't tell me. Um, well, you know, I think that was all the words today. And now I will, I'm going to pick a word of them. I'm going to pick one of them to be the word of the episode. Which one of you is going to be the word of the episode? I don't know. Let's read them. Okay. Today we had faithless. Fater, fajita, fake, 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 fake out. I guess faker wasn't, well, faker was part of fake. Uh, fakir, fala, falafel, phalangist, and falasha. Oh, man. Um, I, th I mean, I was very tempted to pick fala because it's just very silly that it's even in here in the first place. Fa la 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 uh, But I, th I think I'm just going to pick falafel as the word of the episode. Falafels are balls of chickpeas. Put some tahini on your falafel. Falafels aren't spicy unless you put some spices in them. I mean, they have spices, but I don't think they're spicy. You can dip them in tahini, you can dip them in hummus, you can dip them in baba ganoush, you can dip them in, or just don't dip them. Eat them plain. Dip them in lentil soup. Put them in a pita. Do whatever you want with your falafel. I was going to say fajita because it rhymed with pita. Put some fajita on a pita. Okay, uh, falafel. Falafel. I could go for some falafel. Right now for breakfast. What I will do right now, though, this is my my sustenance, my my breakfast, is telling you about a movie that I watched. And we have left off at Robot Dreams. Robot Dreams was nominated for Best Animated Picture in the Oscars last year. And I don't think it won. I think The Boy and the Heron won, which I still haven't seen. And I'm very disappointed about that. But Robot Dreams came to our local little theater, and so we went and saw it. It's a very cute, sweet movie, and it's uh, basically no talking. Uh, there are sound and sound effects, and sometimes the characters will make sounds like, oh, ah, not really. But there's no dialogue, and um, it's a very interesting and unique, very slow, very chill movie. But yes, worth a watch. Uh, simple but good animation. And... Uh, it's, I think it takes place in the new, in New York, but like early, is it like eighties or nineties? It's like, it's a little bit of a period piece, 
but it's animated. So there's like cartoons, there's there's um, animals and robots instead of humans. No humans. I don't think there's any humans. I think it's all animals with some with robots. Uh, yeah, worth a watch. Very, very interesting. Okay, that's the end of the episode. Thank you very much for checking out this show. Just don't, just skip all the other shows. Just watch this show. And until next time, this is Spencer not being a faker, not faking you out, not being faithless. He is, fa he is your faithful Spencer dispensing information. Goodbye. <laughs>